Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord, our God, before thine altar, Father. Thou knowest best our yearning hearts, this supplication answer. Lift up from want of thy people, Lord. Bless us, O God, O Father, bless our toil. Under thy cross we stand prepared to serve thee with devotion. Be it with sweat of blood or tears or humble resignation. For we thy people are, O Lord, Save us, O oh God, O oh Father, bless our toil. We will begin on page 63, Contemporary Rite. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And now let us pause and make an examination of our consciences. Now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in whom my heart trusted and found help. So my heart rejoices. With my song, I praise my God. The Lord is our God, who rules the whole earth. He remembers forever his covenant, the pact imposed for thousands of generations, which is made with Abraham, and the birth of Abraham, and Isaac, and read by his God, Victor Jacob, and everlasting covenant for Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have been our protector through all generations. You have called us and by a covenant bound us. Set our hope fully upon the grace that is ours, so that we may inherit what you have promised. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. John, if you would proclaim the word. A 
reading from the Book of Wisdom. <clears throat> the night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. John Andrew would offer the response. The response is, blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Exalt you just in the Lord, praise from the upright is fitting. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people of the Lord has chosen to his own. Our soul waits for the Lord who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people of the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and maker is God. By faith he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had an opportunity to return but now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and who, he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendant shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Anyone who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await the master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent servant, steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is he, that servant, whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly, much more will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the theme for today is faith. We see in Paul's writing to the Hebrews a very strong spiritual statement concerning faith. Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. I had placed in, the, in this week's bulletin the story of Abraham a man of faith who believed and trusted in everything that God had said unto him. If you look at the life of Abram, who later became Abraham, we realize that it had to be by faith that Abraham decided to move his, all his property and his, and his family to an unknown land. It was faith that Abraham, later named by God, that he would be the father of a great nation. It was by faith and the faith that he shared with his family that Sarah, who was sterile, and Abraham, that was up in his years, would bear a son whose name is Isaac. I think I might have mentioned a couple of weeks ago, um, at least in the bulletin, about when it was told that Sarah would conceive, she started to laugh. Well, I don't know how many of you know, but the very word or the name of Isaac is translated to, they laughed. 
And so it was a blessing that God had given on. Abraham did not know how this was going to take place since Sarah was sterile. And so in the days of the Old Testament, if your wife could not give you an heir, then it was per permissible to sleep with a concubine. Strange times, strange situations. And so Sarah's maidservant, Hagar, was impregnated by Abraham, and she bore a son, and his name was Ishmael. Now Ishmael, we find out later on, became the father of the Arab nation. That is why in Judaism, Christianity, and in, in Islam, Abraham is considered the father of all the faith. If we look at Abraham's life again, when Isaac was grown, God commanded and put Abraham to a test to take his son and to offer him as a burnt sacrifice. Now to have faith is to obey and to believe. And so Abraham took his son Isaac and placed him on the altar. And before he sacrificed Isaac, the angel of the Lord stopped Isaac. Abraham was put to the test and in his faith he trusted God even to the point of taking his only son, who was to be the descendant of the Jewish people, that in the end, the Abra Abraham and his faith held very fast. You know, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, the word faith comes again and again. I share with you just another person in the Old Testament. That person's name was Job. Now, I don't know if you have ever read the book of Job. Most of us have not. For me, I'm constantly learning, and I remember reading Joel, Job many, many years ago. Well, the story of Job is that he was pretty well off. He had all kinds of blessings, but what happened is that there was a, a conflict between Satan and God. Satan was saying, you know, you say that Job will be faithful unto you. Well, take away the things that, that he has in his life and put Job to the test. And so if we read in the book of Job, God had taken away all his livelihood, all his livestock, even his own family who ridiculed him. And in the end, Job was covered in boils. Now, I don't know how worse it could be for an individual to be put to the test, but Job was put to the test to see whether or not he would remain faithful. And the way the story ended is that Job trusted in God he put his faith in God, and in the end of the book of Job, all the things that Job had lost came back to him, and even more so. You know, my brothers and sisters, we all go through life in which we have times of frustration, depression, a lack of faith. Even the disciples of Jesus said, Lord, we believe but help us in our unbelief. You know, when we're put to a test, a perfect example is that when we lose a departed loved one, our faith is questioned. How could God do this to me? Or the poor people down in Kentucky, for an example, how can they say, how can God do this to me and for me to still have faith? Well, again, as St. Paul says, Faith are those things that we hope for, but not necessarily seen. We realize that there is a great re reward that comes to all of us who continue to have faith. As I have said many times ago, when our Lord touches us through his divine spirit, and we know that he is real, it is the kind of faith that strengthens us, 
that empowers us to realize that whatever may come our way, as it comes to all people, that the only difference is that we have the faith that will sustain us and will guide us into even having greater faith. I stated in the bulletin that the very existence of Jesus was a man of faith. He trusted in God. God had given him the power to heal. God had given him the wisdom to preach. As God's only son, Jesus showed the faith unto others. How many times did Jesus say unto those that were being healed, your faith has saved you. And so my brothers and sisters, faith may seem to be a common word, but it is basically the essence of our existence and our relationship between God and ourselves. Let us pray. O God, the author of faith, we come to you this day seeking your blessing to rest upon us and upon our loved ones. Lord, increase our faith. May we come to know and believe in you and with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. Seek to teach others of the faith that you have given unto us. In Jesus' name we pray this day. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I be he live in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. On this beautiful day in which the Lord has given us, we pray that the intentions that we offer to God at this time may be received. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are suffering from not only the COVID-19, but also those who suffer from the recent epidemic of the monkeypox. And we pray that God may bless and touch them and that they may come to know that Jesus is the divine physician who heals those who turn to him. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for those who are suffering in eastern Kentucky, as well as those who are suffering in Ukraine and around the world. And we pray that God might touch those who perpetrate such crimes and those for whom lack faith, that they may be strengthened in their faith and come to know the living and true God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all abused and neglected children in our world as well as all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve in our armed forces, 
that God through his holy angels may protect all of them and return them safe and sound to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Polish National Catholic Church. We pray for holy name of Jesus and all its congregants and all our loved ones that the grace of God through the holy name of Jesus might bless in each and every single one of us and draw us unto his Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we offer to you this day these intentions and our own intentions. And we pray that as we ask, we shall receive. Let us pray. Do not enter into judgment with your servant. Before you, no living being can be just. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands have made, may be for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may become for us our spiritual drink. O oh, Lord God, we ask that you receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you this day with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your most holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they whose memories we honor here on earth intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day, amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, accept these gifts of bread and wine and the offering of ourselves. By your grace, renew us that we may fittingly thank you, for you have made us your heirs. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. It was out of love that you have called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life. And by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. And so with trust, we commend this day to your fatherly care. Therefore, we join with the voices of the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. This morning, let us turn to page 82 and offer the Eucharistic prayer number two, which is the canon of St. Hippolytus.
we give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit an offering upon your holy church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So that we might praise and glorify you through Jesus Christ your son. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. And now let us turn to page 95 and continue with Holy Mass. Forever and ever, let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. 
do not look at our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This morning, let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, Free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. My dear brothers and sisters, those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, let us offer up an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior, amen. We will take the heavenly bread and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body. Receive the body of the blood of Christ. Receive the body of the blood of Christ. Receive the body of the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Uh, Evelyn, may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and be with you now and forever. 
receive the body and the blood of Christ. Peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, Liam, and be with you now and forever. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. O sacred banquet, memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them. Hear our prayers, heaven sent this day to your majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this sacred altar, the body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, may we perceive with pure hearts that which we have received and have taken as food. And may the gifts we have received this day bring us healing and strength now and forever. Amen. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the grace of this Eucharist, enable us wisely to use the time ability and possessions entrusted to us so that we may be faithful stewards and come to know eternal joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you and upon all your loved ones and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ guide us into the light as he is in the light. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day as his disciples and proclaim the greatness of his majesty. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Wayne, I agree with you how blessed we are to have an outdoor altar. <clears throat> Remember back in 2020, Wayne, Eric, a couple others, where we would take the altar from the church and to bring it down here. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we had close to 15 weeks. And so that has been um, a blessing that I think God has given to us. And so, with this consecrated altar, we've already had a few times in which we've celebrated outdoor mass, and it's only natural that um, on a day like today, that we would come into God's nature and the creation and to be able to give him our maker, our thanksgiving. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.